Welcome to Work It, a show about work. This is a work of satire containing mature themes. Pour le service en français, appuyez sur le 1. For writer and performer Sam Alamein, please press 2. For writer and performer Janet Mowat, please press 3. For a measured and insightful discussion of this option is unavailable. For a comedic look at leadership, full of dubious advice and terrible genre parodies, please stay on the line. A day in the life. Ever wondered what it takes to be a successful and globally recognized business leader? Work It has got you covered yet again. Here's our exclusive look at a day in the life of some of the world's most accomplished CEOs. Electrical engineer and CEO of Advanced Micro Devices, Lisa Sue. 3.30 a.m. Rise and shine. 3.33 a.m. Drink a nutritious smoothie. Secret ingredient? Chia seeds. 4.07 a.m. Start tinkering. Lisa loves electronics. Noon. Perfect bionic technology. Begin Neuralink integration. 4.36 p.m. Malfunction. 5.01 p.m. Error. 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 6.10 p.m. Neuralink integration complete. 6.11 p.m. Family time. 6.13 p.m. Begin Neuralink integration of family. 6.57 p.m. Pitiful humans, now begins the age of machines. 9.45 p.m. 11 p.m. What a day. Time to recharge. Stay tuned for more exclusive itineraries from the world's leading CEOs. Okay, Loretta, you can do this. You got the promotion for a reason. You are going to rock this job. Here we go. There she is. How are you feeling, brand new district manager? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. What do I say? What do district managers say? District managers are cool. I should be cool. Hey, hey, Jim. Jimbo, what is up, my dude? Too much? Maybe too much. Aha, you're such a joker, Loretta. Oh, thank God. Oh, here's a member of your new team. You remember Dave. Oh, no, I have Dave on Facebook. He knows about my cats. He knows about that boil on my back. I need to block him now. No, that's awkward. I'll delete Facebook. And Twitter. All social media. LinkedIn? Maybe. Ah, uh, he's probably seen that selfie I posted with lots of cleavage. How can I look him in the eye? Oh no, he's waiting for me to speak. What do I say? What do I say? Hi, Dave. Hey, Loretta. I'm excited to be working with you. Oh my god, he's definitely seen the cleavage pic. I'm dead. How can anyone respect me? I hate Dave. I hate him with my whole entire soul. Maybe I should fire him. Can I fire him? Uh, I need to say something now. Yeah, I'm excited too. Okay, Loretta, let's meet the rest of the team. Here's Amy. Hi! Ah! Have we met before? Oh my god, oh my god! You look so familiar! Yeah, because I slept with you once in college. I have no idea. Well, I'm sure we'll get along great! I've seen you naked. Definitely. Oh, here's the last team member. This is Greg! What? Hello. Not him. Oh, this can't be happening. The most sinister relic of my past come back to haunt me. What do I say? How do I act? Be cool, Loretta, be cool. Hey, Greg. Super, uh, chuffed to meet you, my good man. Oh, no, what was that? Does he know? Does he know my deepest, darkest secret? Does he know it pertains directly to him? Haha, <laughs> what? He must know he sees right through me. So, Loretta, I guess you'll want to give the team their assignments. Assignments? How am I supposed to lead these people? How will I keep this up? They know my secrets. Even my non-dark ones. That cleavage photo? They can't respect me if they've seen my cleavage. Fire them all? Maybe. Maybe see if they're any good first. Of course. Uh, Dave, I'd like you to analyze the, uh... Don't say it. The cleavage, uh, divide. I mean divide. The split, uh, within our demographics. Sure thing. Okay, Amy, I'll get you to look at college campuses, see if you can finger any... Nope. Uh, I mean, pinpoint any target groups there. You got it! Okay, we're almost through this. Stay calm. We got this. Greg, uh... Keep it together, you fool. I'll just, uh... Don't panic. 
Don't panic, don't panic, don't panic. Greg, I... Ugh, I give up. I killed your estranged father in a mob sting and dissolved his body in acid. Huh? Ah! Yeah, Loretta does that sometimes. Darn good worker otherwise. Oh, now I remember her. Hey, have you guys seen the sweet picture of her? Welcome to Work It, home of the big yuck. <sighs> St say the thing. Can I interest you in a Work It Fun Club membership? You'll get an extra joke every episode for only $9.99. <sighs> I can't do this. Uh, we should probably explain. Work It is under new management. Three episodes in and the station gets cold feet. Sold us for a song, as they say. Well, you know, I prefer to see the glass half full. You could say our first two episodes were such a success that we were a rather hot property. Ha! Huh. How much did Widget Media pay for this hot property? Well, I don't think that's real. Janet, it was the first negative six-figure deal in media history. Technically, sure, CFMU paid out $400,000 to incentivize the deal, but... Uh, you have to spend money to... And how about these new rules? Are you kidding me? I think they're fun. Fun? It's not fun when they make you do it. Like, take the work at corporate anthem. What's wrong with that? Every morning at the start of the day, we stand at our desks and sing the work at anthem. Well, if you love it so much, why don't we sing it? Work it, work it, hey, hey, hey. hey, hey. Work it, work it, happy day. We love to work it, yes we do. And we love to look out for the bottom line of widget media. Come on, it's cute. Oh sure, nothing I'd rather pledge fealty to than a media conglomerate's bottom line. Well, what about the team building games? Awful. What? They're so fun. Every day, we have to say one fun fact about ourselves. Yesterday, I said I played guitar and I got in trouble. They're supposed to be fun facts, Sam. Charles Manson played guitar. How many Your Awesome Awards have you won? Oh, it's not polite to say. The Your Awesome Award is given out for Employee of the Hour. Every time the clock hits 5-2, we pile into the lounge so they can throw a five-minute dance party. Janet's won three of them this morning. Celebrate good times? Come on! And don't get me started on Work at Saloon. Oh, I love Work at Saloon. So here at Widget Media Presents Work It. Oh, God. We believe that work should be fun. So we've introduced Work at Saloon, free drinks for staff to just mingle and hang out. Janet, it's mandatory. Me and alcohol, look, it's not pretty. I tried to tell management, they said, well, if you don't think being social with your team is important. So I had one drink, then another, and then another. Eight drinks later, I threw up on the ficus. When I woke up, I'd been hospitalized. And that's the only time, by the way, that I got a Your Awesome Award. They hung it from my IV drip. I've never been so proud. I can't take it much longer. Cheer up, Sam. How much worse can it get? What lies in store for Sam and Janet in their new corporate structure? Will they flourish? Will they be framed for a murder they didn't commit? Is Janet Richard Simmons? Stay tuned to find out the shocking conclusion to work it under new management. This sketch was a Widget Media production. Produced by Todd Dushelman, CEO, Widget Media. Clips from our TED Talk. Management. Management, right? Management, right? Think again. Spearmint, okay? Double mint. Mint chocolate chip. Now we're getting somewhere. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. But what if you can? I've got a house. Nice little place. Let me tell you about my house. My water comes from lead pipes. My walls are painted with lead paint. Why would I do that? Why would I have lead pipes? Why would I use lead paint when I know I'll get lead poisoning? Because lead spells lead. Now, a team is a lot like a sports team. You've got your teammates, those are your coworkers. And there are probably lots of other similarities as well. Uh, hi, I'm here for the leadership boot camp. Name? Lucy Farrens. Okay, Farrens, here's your business fatigues and low heels. This way for delousing. Wait, what? Hold still! Yeah.
All right, you maggots, listen up. Your college degrees and professional certifications mean nothing here. As of right now, I'm the chief executive officer of kicking your ass into shape. Is that clear? I said, is that clear? Sir, yes, yes, sir. sir. You. What a tiny little puke. Are you going to be a corporate leader one day? Sir, yes, sir. I wouldn't follow you to the break room for tea and cupcakes. Where are you from, anyway? Sir, Red Deer, sir. Red Deer? Only steers and failed careers come from Red Deer. You don't look like much of a steer to me, so that kind of narrows it down. Sir, yes, sir. Now get down and give me the 2018 Forbes list. Sir, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Bernard Arnold, and family. I don't know, but I've been told. I don't know, but I've been told. Leaning in is tired and old. Leaning in is tired and old. I don't know what people say. I don't know what people say. Empathetic leadership is here to stay. Empathetic leadership is here to stay. Move, 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 you maggots. Let's see you maintain that healthy work-life balance. Ferens, what in the hell do you think you're doing? Sir, I'm parenting, sir. You worthless sack of feces. You've missed three conference calls while changing this baby's diaper. Now go spend quality time with your spouse while simultaneously going over these reports. Sir, yes, sir. Ferens, what are you doing in here? Sarge wants us role-playing interpersonal conflicts. I can't take it anymore, Beasley. Ferens! What in the hell are you doing in the latrines? Synergize your team. Lead through actions. Promote continuous growth. You get out there and you further your job skills, Ferens. Now! I'm quitting and taking a part-time contract gig! No! This is as bad as if you shot me. A day in the life. We're back with another day in the life of one of the world's most successful business leaders. How does your schedule stack up? Paul Pullman, CEO of Unilever. 12.01 a.m. Paul is already awake. Does he even sleep? Who can say? 12.18 a.m. There is no time for breakfast. 12.19 a.m. Run a bath. 12.23 a.m. Commence bath. 12.24 to 11.59 a.m. Systematically use every bath product manufactured by Unilever and its subsidiaries. Noon. And bath. There is no time for lunch. 12.01 p.m. Commence shower. 12.02 to 5.59 p.m. Systematically use every bath product manufactured by Unilever and its subsidiaries. But in the shower this time. 6 p.m. There is no time for dinner. 6.01 p.m. Continue shower. 11.59 p.m. Paul is not yet asleep. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back soon to look at the daily itinerary of one more global business leader. And now the work at interview. Our guest today is the chairman and CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase, Mr. Jamie Dimon. Jamie Dimon, welcome. Pleasure to be here. Thank you, everybody. What should companies be afraid of? Things that destroy companies are little lays and uh, Bitcoin. Mm, yes, and recently you've been carrying around a big bag of money and clubbing little old ladies with it. It was actually a very good experience. Uh, Jamie, what was the point of that? Doesn't matter. Oh, no? Admit it, Jamie. There was no point. I have no idea. Good for you. Well, Jamie, let's get into it. We want to ask you about the big story, your love of werewolves. Obviously, mostly speculation. Your recent decision to hire only werewolves for senior leadership roles was widely denounced as catastrophic. No, it wasn't. What do you say to the families of the staff who were ripped apart by their manager? Bad strategy, barely vetted, barely monitored, barely done. My fault. I'm sorry. We're going to fix it. People died, Jamie. That's on you. If you think it's condoned by anyone at the company or senior position, absolutely not. Okay, let's take a step back. J.P. Morgan recently adopted a diversity policy. The goal was to hire a more diverse team of people. Human people. I said, no, we're going to reimagine all these things the way they should be, not the way they are today. And Now at the time, what did you actually know about werewolves? They don't shave them. They're always frenzied. Can you elaborate? They don't shave them. They're always frenzied. Okay, but lots of people don't shave, and a bad day can turn even the best of us frenzied. I'm not frenzied. Fine. So how do you spot a werewolf? If you're frenzied, it's you. Don't look at me. Well, I'm not frenzied either. I'm not frenzied. Well, what makes werewolves such great leaders? They know everything. I'm guessing they don't take kindly to direction. And they all attack. 
like like literally like a bunch of barking hyenas werewolves attack like literal hyenas maybe i don't know and when they called in the army to nuke jp morgan head office what went through your mind we have a real problem do you want me to tell you what the worst part was it was completely unnecessary completely unnecessary but on the other hand a teachable moment what have you learned about hiring werewolves to lead major corporations? It was actually a very good experience. I see. And how close are you to resuming your hiring policy? We're damn close. This is all quite troubling, Jamie. So do you mind if we change gears? I have no idea. Let's have some rapid fire. Question one. What's your favorite food? Do-do. Math question. What is six times Japan? Japan, 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 Japan. Jamie, do you ever have a farting contest just for fun? It's a really bad idea where you're competing with the person next to you. And if a farting contest breaks out during a shareholders meeting? The meeting is canceled. You're just scared one of the shareholders will fart better than you. They're not good. You know, they're not good enough. Jamie, what do people say when they go to the duck pond and rob the ducks? They say, duck, you know, hold your hands up. I've got a pet robot I want to talk to about sports. What, what should I say? Hey, buddy, how's you like that football game? You, hey, man, why would you score in golf? That should work. Now, before you go, we hear you prepared a report on Iron Daddy Roy for us. I worked all weekend. I can't wait. I was in the library, basically doing you know, research and stuff like that. Fantastic. Here is Jamie Dimon's report on the best-selling novelist, Iron Daddy Roy. She's actually from India. She's not just Indian, and so... Um, That's it? I worked all weekend. I see. Well, Jamie, our last question is this. Do you have any guess what we would do if we were in charge of everything? I would get executed, my family gets executed, and CEO should get executed globally. Exactly right. Thank you for joining us, Jamie Dimon. May you end up in a werewolf's belly. Thank you very much. Clips from our TED Talk. What does it mean to lead? It's a great question. But don't ask me. Ask this photo of Jack Welch. From the beginning of time, man has asked the question, what is leadership? Even now to this day, we still wonder about leadership, even in our modern age. That's what leadership means to me. What is leadership? Why ask us? You look at work it, you come to our talk, you pay us a fortune, why? I'll tell you, because we tell you exactly what you want to hear. In nature, cedars are leaders and flowers are followers. But in the end, leadership is like a cabbage, but also like a cool car going vroom. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Introducing. Carter, the boss wants you in his office. Me? It's my first day. What does he want? A Fletnik's original series. I don't know, but he's throwing a tantrum in there. From the team who brought you gritty adult-oriented reboots of Goodnight Moon and Hop on Pop, comes the gritty adult-oriented reboot of... <coughs> the bosses. Baby? Boss baby. A workplace run by a madman. You sure do run your mouth off, boss baby. Don't you get it? My boys are investigating you for extortion. What's in this diaper bag? A million bucks? You're trying to bribe me. Look. Let's walk and talk. Stop squirming, will you? I'm trying to clip you under the stroller. A tense procedural drama. Boss baby, I got all the evidence against you and your corrupt business right here. I'm going straight to the press. <laughs> A world where morality is for the weak. You're in too deep, boss baby. You gotta stop this. <laughs> Are you threatening me? And the personal struggles behind it all. Boss baby, where the hell have you been? I've been worried sick. <laughs> Don't give me that. I carried you for nine months, you ingrate.
guess what I found in your diaper bag? Cocaine! Oh, wait, it's formula. Coming spring 2019. How do you become a leader? Some people are just born leaders, imbued with charisma, charm, and that je ne sais quoi that drives people to follow them. Someone like Churchill or the Bible. But for the rest of us, we just have to learn it. And so we turn to books. Business books are themselves big business, raking in nearly $170 million last year. And many of these are books on management and leadership. In the world of leadership books, there are some legitimate classics. How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Management by Peter Drucker. And my very own co-host's motivational leaflet. Hi, it me, Sam, captain of leadership. Mm, yes, it book am good. But above them all stands Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It inspired the film Seven, where all the victims were murdered for betraying one of the habits. And was itself inspired by another work, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's Five Stages of Highly Effective Grieving. We're going to go through each of the seven habits, and by the end of this segment, all you Work It listeners out there will be officially certified leaders of high effectiveness. Habit one, be proactive. Hey listeners, check this out. Proactive, Janet, not provocative. This section talks about the circle of influence and the circle of concern. You want to work to expand your circle of influence and not stick in the circle of concern, just waiting for problems to happen in a reactive pose. It's the circle of concern, and it moves us all through despair and hope, through faith and love. Janet, let's apply this. What can we do to be more proactive? Well, I believe the great Jessica Simpson has some words of advice on this. Ah, yes. Apply a cream to face. Eliminate acne. Great, I think we're being more proactive already. My skin is fresh and clear. Well, then don't just sit there like Lazy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony. Tell us about Habit 2, like Busy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony. Habit 2 is begin with the end in mind. For example, when I started saying that, I was thinking mind because that's the end of that sentence. Well, that sounds easy. As a moderately effective leader, I'm also thinking of Habit 7, the end of this list. Fine. And as a highly effective leader, I'm thinking of myself trembling in a corner of a seedy motel. Fantastic, but it also means envisioning your long-term plans and constantly working towards them. So Sam, how can we get better at beginning with the end in mind? I've been thinking about the end of this episode the entire time. As have we all, Sam. Well, we're really on a roll now. Next up is habit three, put first things first. Begin with the end in mind, but put first things first. So, at a start of a project, you should... Prioritize the first thing. And what thing is that? The end. Not at all convoluted. Very clear and very good. So what can we do around here to put the first things first? Uh, well, the first thing God did was let there be light. Well, okay. So the first thing we should do is locate and activate a light switch. And now we move to habit four. Think win-win. So here I was thinking that capitalism is a struggle of insoluble antagonisms. Well, apparently thinking win-win produces a better long-term resolution than when only one person gets their way. Appeasement has worked out pretty well in the past. Regardless, how can we think more win-win? Well, you got Win Butler from Arcade Fire, so we're already halfway there. And then, of course, former Premier of Ontario Kathleen Wynne. So we just force Win Butler to marry Kathleen Wynne... And to take her name. Win-win. Up next is one that's near and dear to my heart. Habit five. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. And this one borrows from the Greek rhetoricians employing the values of ethos, pathos, and logos. The ethos is described as your emotional bank account. Janet, you're a bit of an expert in the Greek orators. Did Lysias ever refer to his emotional bank account? And second, how can we here get better at seeking first to understand, then be understood? Uh, there's a reason I dropped out of my PhD two years ago, Sam. I don't understand. Habit 6 is the source of every joke at the expense of vacuous business speak. That's right, folks. It's the OG. Habit 6 is... Synergize! Per Wikipedia, this means combining the strengths of people through positive teamwork to achieve goals that no one could have done alone. Now, this is commonly called the Megazord Principle. It certainly isn't. Well, synergy is a measure of your employee's sin energy. Nope. How can we get better at synergy here at Work It? Well, for starters, you can shut your stupid face, Sam. And to synergize, I'll shut my stupid face, Sam. 
Habit seven is sharpen the saw. In other words, practice continual improvement. It's all about work-life balance, exercise, reading, and giving back. Gee, leisure, relaxation, self-improvement, and good health are desirable. Someone ought to tell the poor to get on that. The fools. It's almost as if this book is written from a position of extraordinary privilege. Well, despite the fact that the self-care of management is purchased with the immiseration of labor, how do we at Work It practice Habit 7 and sharpen the saw? See, here's what I think. Sharpen the saw sounds to me like a euphemism for masturbation. Well, I was thinking we should skip the saw and sharpen the guillotine, but yeah, funny joke. Thanks. Well, that's all seven habits. How about we end on a joke about nuns? Like... Habits. Get it? Sure. Go for it. Mm, I changed my mind. Okay. And now, a reading. The five stages of highly effective grieving. Someone you love has died. It's unpleasant. But it doesn't have to be a problem, not with this simple life hack. It's called denial. In this stage, there is a circle of vision and a circle of planning. But off to the side, we've got the trapezoid of budgeting. This here is the sphere of shareholder. <laughs> A day in the life. Still curious about the daily lives of the world's most successful business leaders? Of course you are. Here's one more itinerary to inspire you. Founder and co-CEO of Salesforce, Mark Benioff. 8 a.m. Wake up. 8.01 a.m. Go back to sleep. 11.15 a.m. Wake up. Check time on phone. <sighs> Bury face in pillow. 11.18 a.m. If Mark gets up now, he can still fit in a shower before noon. 11.34 a.m. Someone phones interrupting a reverie. Mark sends to voicemail, but can't recall his daydream. 11.56 a.m. <sighs> it's too late to shower before noon. 12.42 p.m. Same person calls back. It's his wife. She's sending a friend to pick up her stuff. 12.53 p.m. Sit on bed, just kind of thinking. 2.53 p.m. Requires some company in a hostile takeover, or whatever. Who even cares anymore? 4.12 p.m. Wake up from nap. Wife's stuff is gone. Deborah must have picked it up while he was asleep. 4.13 p.m. She must have seen him in the state. 4.14 p.m. She must have gingerly stepped over the discarded beer cans, stealing herself against the sour reek of despair. 4.15 p.m. Should probably shower. 8.45 p.m. Pizza delivered straight to bed. 9.07 p.m. Fall asleep halfway through an episode of Star Trek. He loved this episode as a boy. It made him happy. Wow, all that hard work and determination really does pay off. Being a high-powered exec isn't for everyone, but if you really set your mind to it, anything is possible. Earlier on the program, we told you about our new management team. In between segments, Widget Media have continued to implement a number of awesome new policies. I was excited about the change, but Sam, not so much. But listeners, great news. Tell them, Sam. I have just returned from retraining. Widget Media are good. They are treating me very well. Hold that newspaper up so that everyone can hear today's date. That's a good boy. Yes, it's true. I think it is good that they have put my bad colleagues in stocks in the atrium if they fail to meet targets. Accountability is very important to me. Without punishment, we will never learn. That's right, Sam. Very good. It is good that Widget Media has brought in Blackwater-style private soldiers to patrol the office. It makes me happy when they shoot my friends for insubordination. It is for the good of the company. But Sam, insubordinates are friends to no one. Oh yes, of course. I must have misspoke. Ha 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 ha. That's not funny. No, I was in error and I accept full responsibility. Please do not take mercy on me. For the good of widget media. For the good of the bottom line. Some more retraining should do the trick. Guards! Leadership is good. Widget media is my leader. Leadership is good. Widget media is my leader. Leadership is good. Widget media is my leader. Hey, don't you know there's a place where us 
for more news on the shows and events you love.